Had I known what events would follow, I would have locked away everything. Disney's Epic Mickey is the highly anticipated game from Warren Spector of Deus Ex fame. This third-person adventure aims to reinvent the iconic mouse and reinvigorate Disney's video game offerings. The story begins as a mischievous Mickey stumbles into the wizard Yen Sid's workshop to find a magical brush and a model world. He spills the bottle of ink and accidentally creates the shadow blot. Mickey pours some thinner onto the blot but destroys the model in the workshop. Months later, the shadow blot returns and abducts Mickey, dropping him into a wasteland of forgotten Disney characters led by Walt Disney's first character, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. The premise is interesting enough to draw people in but fails to go anywhere interesting until the final hour of the game, with the majority of the game feeling like filler. For such a promising setup, it's all the more disappointing to see the game fail to capitalize on its potential. Your decisions in the game determine how the story concludes, but they only lead to minor alterations of either the good or bad endings. Disney successfully experimented with their brand image in the past with Roger Rabbit to great success, but Epic Mickey is less successful at revamping Disney's image than Miley Cyrus. The environments of the wasteland feel barely tied to Disney. The main hub, Mean Street, is a riff on Disney's Main Street, but it lacks any iconic imagery from the original. There's a futuristic space world that seems like a Tron ripoff since it only vaguely references the original and never mentions it by name. The only time you truly feel like you're in a Disney game is when you're in one of the great side-scrolling levels. The side-scrolling levels are fun and inventive takes on the old Disney cartoons and make you feel like you're actually part of the cartoon. They're easily the most enjoyable part of the game, or make that the only enjoyable part of the game. But unfortunately, they're only short segues between worlds. The music in the side-scrolling levels are also great and tie into the theme of the level perfectly, evoking Disney tunes of the past. The music in the rest of the game, though, is disappointing to say the least. Disney has always been known for great music, but the themes here are unmemorable. The music doesn't even fade into itself when it repeats. It'll only abruptly stop before starting over again, much like a skipping CD. <laughs> there isn't any voice acting either. Instead, you'll hear a grunt from the character and then read an entire paragraph of what they meant to say. The Wasteland is filled with forgotten characters from Disney's past and sounds like a great idea. But Walt Disney must have used almost every character he ever drew because the Wasteland is filled with hundreds of the same horse thing in different costumes. Even the bosses look the same. On the bright side, at least you can see the bosses. The rest of the game is a dark, muddy mess in which you can't even see anything. You can't see doors, you can't see exits, you can't see platforms, and you can't see walls. You can't see holes, you can't see anything. The game is so dark that it hinders the gameplay. At its heart, Epic Mickey is a platformer in the vein of Mario's Sunshine. Your paintbrush acts like Mario's water pack with the added twist of being able to paint or thin objects. It's a novel idea, but it doesn't deliver at all. When it comes to puzzles and platforming, the paintbrush is a glorified on and off switch. Instead of opening a door, shoot thinner on the wall. Instead of closing a door, shoot paint on the wall. Need to turn on a machine? Shoot paint on it. Want to stop a platform from spinning? Shoot thinner on it. It's all very lackluster for a game mechanic with so much hype behind it. The paintbrush also plays into combat, but it's best left ignored in favor of knocking enemies off ledges with Mickey's spin attack. Aiming the paintbrush requires you to aim the Wiimote at the screen and run around at the same time, but the paint shoots from where Mickey's standing, so the paint often shoots onto the floor and walls instead of where you need it to be. It's very frustrating and you'll find yourself dying needlessly. Your spin attack won't work on any of the bigger enemies, so you'll have to resort to shooting paint in their mouth. Yep, I hope you enjoy shooting paint in mouths because you'll be doing a lot of it here. You'll find yourself battling with the camera more often than the blotlings of the wasteland. Doing a three-point jump should never be this difficult, especially in a platformer. When you're not pulling out your hair in anger from the platforming segments, which you will be doing more often than you could ever imagine, the game throws an endless amount of fetch quests at you. But at least the game occasionally offers you the chance to buy what you need instead of going through all those unnecessary steps. Nothing like promoting consumerism at a young age, right Disney? 
If you think having a map would help you on your way, you're probably thinking of another game that isn't a miserable excuse for a game. The map is absolutely useless. It gives you no indication of where you are, which way you're looking, or where you need to go. You should probably just forget about it along with the $50 you wasted on this game. You'll never get it back. Overall, the game just feels uninspired and is not fun to play at all. I may not be the target audience for this game, but I don't think kids are going to enjoy this one either. They won't know what to do and will easily get frustrated just like I did. Believe me, I'm not trying to be overly harsh on this game. I was looking forward to playing it. I even tricked a co-worker into letting me play it. I tried to like it, I tried to like it again, and again, but each time I tried to like it, I ended up throwing down my controller in anger and frustration. Not since The Phantom Menace has something ruined my childhood memories so much. Oh wait, I forgot about Sonic 4. There are a lot of good ideas at work here, but it takes more than good ideas to be successful. If all I needed was good ideas, I'd be a billionaire living in space with a pet shark and one of those memory erasing things from Men in Black so I could easily forget the time I had to spend with Epic Mickey. You'll be better off enjoying Mickey's Epic 40 ounce. I hope this game stays in a forgotten wasteland like the characters it's based on. For Mahalo Games, this is Brett, and I don't want to talk about Epic Mickey ever again.